Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about cognitive schemas. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only, not for clinical opinion. For clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest? None. In this video, I am going to discuss about cognitive schemas. I will be defining what is cognitive schemas, how they are formed and how to change them. This video is targeted to psychiatrists, nurses, doctors and mental health professionals such as psychologists, social workers and psychiatric nurses. Further, psychotherapists and counsellors also benefit by this video. Let's understand about cognition. Cognition means ability to perceive, process, understand, store and retrieve information and to make decision and produce appropriate responses in the environment. That means we need cognition to help us to understand the information about the world around us and to interact safely with our environment. That means cognition is very essential in our day to day activities. To perceive the environment and to realize whether it is a threat or is it safe to interact with the environment. And this, there are cognitive schemas. That means to assimilate or to process the event around us because every minute we are giving, getting thousands of information from our surroundings. To understand that there are some schemas are formed to interpret the cognitions. In the early childhood, traumatic experiences forms cognitive schemas. That means we are perceiving thousands of information around us every second. And schemas are formed to interpret the millisecond so that to know whether the environment around is a threat or safe. A schema is a cognitive framework or a concept that helps to organize and interpret information in milliseconds. Schemas can be useful because they allow us to take shortcuts in interpreting the vast amount of information that is available in our environment. So, this definition is very clear. Now let's understand the cognitive schemas in depth. The Frederick Barlett gave this cognitive schema. He said that in his work, remembering a study in the experimental and social psychology in 1932, Frederick was very clear. He brought the concept of schemata. He said, in carrying out a series of study in the recall of Native American folk tales, Frederick noticed that many of the recall were not accurate but involved the replacement of unfamiliar information with something more familiar. In order to account for this error and the findings, Frederick proposed that people have schemata or unconscious mental structures that represents an individual generic knowledge about the world. That means you are going to represent the missing information with your own information because of the schemata which is there in your brain. That is the framework which you have in your brain. And further, the cognitive schema was popularized by Jean Piaget. Jean clearly said that theory of cognitive development includes discussion of cognitive schemata or mental representations. He clearly said that there are mental representations in every person and it occurs during the childhood development. And he also said that schemas are the building blocks for knowledge acquisition. Using this analogy, the building block increases in number as we learn new information from the environment. And once we learn this new information, we will interpret that information whenever we again come across. Maybe a similar situation or else a different situation. That means past events will be used to interpret the new events. Further, Aaron Beck also copied to some extent from the previous Jean and Frederick. He said, a schema is a structure for screening, coding and evaluating stimuli that impinges on the organisms. Here he said very clearly that organisms, that means an individual or a human, will screen, will code and evaluate the stimuli that comes to him, whether that stimuli is a threat, whether it is safe and how the animal should interact with the environment at that point of time. That means schemas are very essential. Further, he also said that stable cognitive pattern is schemas. 
further he also refined it telling that specific rules that govern the information processing and behavior so he gave a two important information with regard to schemas that he said it is a stable cognitive pattern further the specific rules that give that govern the information processing and behavior that's what the Beck has clearly said and now we have understood the past how the cognitive schemas have been evolved let's move into building blocks of cognitive behavioral therapy the building blocks are cognitive distortions cognitive triad schemas automatic negative thoughts physical sensation and feelings but in this video i'm going to focus on schemas in the schema basically cognitive schemas are broad pervasive cognitive themes regarding oneself one's relationship with others and world here the definition is very comprehensive schemas may be acquired in the childhood as a result of traumatic event when core needs are not met that means if a child needs are not met and there is a traumatic event then the schemas will be formed core needs such as safety security nurturance acceptance respect autonomy guidance love attention approval self-expression joy pleasure and relaxation so these are required in the childhood if they are deployed along with the traumatic event is there then the child starts interpreting the event in a different way they are called as schemas so these traumatic event may be childhood traumatic abuse sexual abuse bullying disaster if a child is exposed to disaster, life events, criticism, disciplining and so forth establishes schemas. There are four different types of schemas have been discussed in the literature. One is person schema, self schema, social schema and event schema. Person schemas are persons schemas are focused on particular people that you expect certain person to behave in certain way. That is person schema. Social schemas means schemas include general knowledge about how people behave in certain social situation. That means in a certain in particular social situation, we have to behave like this. If we don't behave in certain situation, that means you're not right. You're wrong. That is called as social schemas. Self schemas. Here where the majority of the psychopathology arises in a human being. Self schemas are focused on your own knowledge about yourself. That means how do you interpret yourself? How do you evaluate yourself? that matters most that is self schemas coming to event schema event schemas are focused on the pattern of behavior that should be followed after certain events so these are the four different types of schemas but very essential is self schemas now let's understand the characteristics of these schemas schemas influence what we pay attention to we get thousands of information from our environment every second we need to focus the task in your hand and to focus that you need schemas and schemas helps in processing the information and schema is an organized pattern of thought and behavior because of your past and because the way you interpreted the events around you you will process the environment whether it is safe or not depending upon how you have dealt your childhood experiences Schemas tend to be easier to change during the childhood, but can become increasingly rigid and difficult to modify as the people grow. The best example I can give you is cognitive behavioral therapy works well in adolescents, in adults, and it becomes difficult to do cognitive behavioral therapy in elderly. It is not impossible, but it becomes very difficult to change the schemas because that person lives on that schemas for entire life. And now you want to change his cognitive schemas. In the middle or the late part of his life it is very difficult because it has grown into a difficult schema which is difficult to change schema will often persist even when the people are presented with the evidence that contracts their belief because these schemas help them to survive but however they are having psychopathology they are having depression they have anxiety but still they believe that these schemas are helpful for them schemas are also impact how quickly people learn that means schemas will help them to learn very fast but at the same time people also learn information more readily when this existing schema fits into the picture or the framework of the information available at the same time if the existing schema can hinder the learning of a new information if the new information given to them does not fit into the already existing schema in their brain 
that means the information will not be processed will not be accepted for learning schemas helps to simplify the world around you so that you can process the event very fast schemas allows to think very quickly and take decision about the environment schemas also can be remarkably difficult to change as i mentioned earlier as the age progresses now let's understand there are schemas what are the way to cope there are two important ways of coping one is adaptive way of coping another one is maladaptive way of coping we are interested in maladaptive way of coping coping maladaptive way of coping is avoidance because of the schemas i'm not good for anything the person becomes withdrawn he will not interact he will be alone most of the time that is avoidance rebel becoming opposition he sees the world is not good for him the world bullies him hence he needs to rebel that is opposition you can see surrender that means the person becomes people pleasing at the cost of his own life at the cost of his own family members he will start pleasing everyone around him and not having his own life these are the three different ways of coping mechanism for maladaptive coping mechanism for schemas schemas may remain dormant in many people they get activated during stress during disasters that means it requires a certain event to trigger these schemas for example father introducing his children he has two children one is 8 year old another one is 6 year old 8 year old child is very brilliant he studies no complaints from the school the other child the 6 year old who is very naughty is very active there are many complaints against him the father when he is introducing this both the children to his friends relatives to the society at large he introduces his elder son who is brilliant very good but the second one 6 year old is a very spoiled brat i will get complaint every day that is the way is introduced think about the child who is 6 year old the 6 year old thinks that my father doesn't like me he has insulted in front of the whole society he loves my only brother that means he loves my brother but not me here the schema is formed now that father doesn't like me because of the father who has the way is introduced to the world that means nobody in the world loves me or likes me so this schema goes on and it gets triggered in a public situation maybe whenever he is evaluated whenever he is in front of people and he feels that he is inadequate this is how the cognitive schemas are formed and maladaptive schemas let's discuss about them some of the five important domains are there one is disconnection and rejection which i mentioned recently that is abandonment mistrust emotional deprivation defectiveness or shame or social isolation that is the first domain second domain is impaired autonomy and performance that is dependency versus incompetence vulnerable to harm or illness enmeshment en enmeshment and failure that is the second domain third domain is impaired limits that is entitlement grandiosity or insufficient self control or self discipline that is the third fourth one is other directedness subjugation self sacrifice approval seeking or recognition seeking which becomes extreme that is very essential to be understand over vigilance and inhibition negativity pessimism emotional inhibition unrelating standards and punitiveness these are the some of the schemas you need to understand they are called as maladaptive schemas everyone has schemas but here the issue is how much does it come in your lay of in your way of living in day to day activities that matters most if it is coming in your way of functioning that it needs to be intervened so that is what is cognitive schema to conclude my dear friends cognitive schemas are a broad pervasive theme or pattern of thinking and behavior compromise this is compromised of memories emotions cognitions behaviors and bodily sensations and these schemas are about oneself and relationship with others and these are developed during childhood and becomes maladaptive during traumatic events and when the needs are not met and this gets elaborated throughout the lifetime and it needs to be dysfunctional to a significant degree and it affects the day to day functioning of that person then only cognitive behavioral therapy need to be advised and the person is able to understand the schemas cognitive triad cognitive distortions automatic negative thought and is able to challenge them 
That means cognitive therapy will be successful. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.